Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you guys today is honestly a really sad one. I started following it a while back when it was still in trial, but now we finally have all of the information that we need to understand what happened and why. So without any further delay, let's just jump right into the case. Let's start the case off by talking about a woman named Michelle Boat and her husband, Nick Boat. Michelle and Nick had been married for 20 years after dating for about one year. The two went on to have two children, a son and a daughter. At the time that this took place, their son, Andrew, was 20 years old and their daughter, Emma, was 18 years old. Michelle had also been married before she met Nick, so she had a child from that marriage as well. So in total, Michelle had three children while her and Nick had two children together. However, after being together longer and longer, Nick said that their marriage started to become complicated. In the latter 10 years of their marriage, Nick bluntly said that it was a loveless marriage. He said that there were a lot of issues where she would just always tell him what to do and he usually just complied. Over the years, Nick said that Michelle would say things to Nick like telling him that she was still in love with her ex-husband to sort of emotionally abuse him. In addition to this, Michelle and Nick didn't seem to agree on almost anything, including how to raise their children. Nick said that he thought that Michelle was just too tough on them, and he said overall he just got tired of the fighting between them. By February of 2020, it was said that a woman named Tracy Mondebo accidentally sent Nick a friend request on Facebook. According to Nick, she was trying to find a different friend on Facebook, but she fat-fingered his picture and accidentally sent him a friend request. When he saw the request, he accepted it. Nick said that Tracy was surprised that he responded to her request since she didn't mean to send it in the first place. But either way, the two began messaging each other on Facebook. At this point, they realized that they had a connection and they wanted to explore that connection more. So they exchanged phone numbers and quickly after that, the two started talking on the phone and texting. After that, the two set up a day to meet up and go on their first date. This date took place on March 8th, 2020. Nick would go on to say, quote, the more we got to talking on the phone, it was like we had been friends forever. Then when we finally went out, we hit it off great. For their first date, they wanted to spend some time outside looking for deer antler sheds around Roberts Creek in Otley, Iowa. At this time, Nick and Michelle had still been living together with their two teenage children, but after meeting this new woman, Nick decided that he had enough of Michelle and their fighting. By March 12th, 2020, Michelle had been working her shift at the laundry room at a local hospital. But when she got home, she had learned that Nick had left the home that they shared together. In that moment, Michelle said that she felt, quote, heartbroken, sad, despondent, devastated, and destroyed. He literally packed up everything and left without saying a word to her. She said that when she realized that he left, it felt like her whole life just walked out of the door. Then around this time, as we remember, that's also when we were in the very early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. Everything was changing. Lockdowns were starting and many of us were facing the anxiety of not knowing what was to come. Michelle said that she suddenly realized that now she was completely alone, now in the start of a new pandemic. At the same time, she had just lost her job and she was completely broke. She said that she literally had $6 to her name when all of this was happening. After this, Michelle admitted that she just fell into a hole. She started drinking and according to her, she was constantly drinking the entire week after Nick left. At the same time, Nick told Michelle that he was no longer in love with her and that he was now in love with a new woman. Now, she didn't initially know who this woman was, but Michelle started following Nick around to see who this other woman was. At first, Michelle followed Nick to his work where he worked at Vermeer Corporation and that is when she saw him with this other woman. At this point, she figured out that he had now been living with the other woman, who was Tracy. Now, 
Tracy recently moved from Ottawa to Pella in Iowa. It was in Pella where she had an apartment where her and Nick were now living. After this, she started following around the both of them, calling Nick and sending them threatening messages. By March 20th, Tracy called the Ottawa police after she noticed that Michelle had been following her around. Michelle had actually followed Tracy 40 miles as she drove all the way from Pella to Ottawa. At this time, Tracy became frightened that she was being followed, so she called the police and asked that they meet her at a gas station. Of course, when they got there, Michelle was there, so they confronted Michelle, and Michelle told the police that she was only following Tracy because she wanted to figure out where her husband was living so that she could beg him to come back. After that, she was sent home. Two days after this incident, Michelle was admitted to a local hospital for mental health treatment, and here she stayed for five days. While there, at some point during all of this, Nick had also ended up speaking with the police, and he told them that Michelle had followed both him and Tracy around several times, and during one of these times, she physically assaulted Nick. So, by March 22nd, 2020, Michelle was charged with domestic abuse. At that time, she admitted to the police that she had repeatedly struck and bruised Nick just a week prior to that. Then, by March 28th, the courts ruled a no-contact order between them. Even after all of that, though, the aggressive and stalking behaviors did not stop. In the weeks that followed, Michelle was charged with five additional misdemeanors. One harassment charge for when she threatened another family member on April 27th, and four no contact order violations for repeatedly calling Nick and at one point even showing up at his work. In addition to that, during this time, Michelle had also sent Nick several threatening text messages. In one text, she told Nick to come home because that's where he belongs. In another text message, she wrote, quote, You'll be seeing my face in your dreams very soon because I'll be there when you open your eyes in the morning and when you close them at night. Then, after weeks and weeks of stalking and the harassments, everything came to a head on the evening of May 18th, 2020. At 8.21 p.m. that day, 911 received a call to report that there was a fight happening in an alley near the Glenwood apartment complex on the 100 block of Glenwood Street. A witness reported seeing a woman standing outside of a car, tussling and having a physical fight with someone who was inside of the car. The person reported that the person standing outside of the car then yelled, he don't belong to you, before the person ran away from the car and drove off in a gray Cadillac. Right away, police were dispatched to the area where they followed and tracked down that gray Cadillac, which they found pretty quickly. They found a car matching that description with blood all over the exterior of the car at a home where Michelle Boat lived on the 100 block of Prairie Street. When police arrived, they said that the car was still warm, so it was obvious that it had just been parked there. When police knocked on the door, Michelle answered, wearing a robe and a towel around her head, which indicated to the police that she had just showered. So, I'm not exactly sure how police gained access to Michelle's home at that point, but my guess would be that she allowed them to search because I don't think they had a warrant at that time. But police did go inside and looked around the home, and when they did so, they found quite a bit of damning evidence. First, they found that the washing machine in the home was running, and in the washer, they found a load of laundry, which included just one outfit. So the outfit that she probably was just wearing, that's the only one that was being washed. Then they found a pair of rubber gloves within the upper tank of the toilet in the bathroom, and on those gloves, there appeared to be blood. By 8.21 p.m., police also arrived at the Glenwood apartment complex where they found the car where the witness reported seeing the fight. Inside of the car, police found Tracy slumped in the driver's seat unconscious with multiple obvious stab wounds all over her body and unfortunately, she was pronounced dead at the scene. Going off of this, police decided to try and track down Michelle's movements from that day. On the 18th, she said that she was driving around to find Nick when she spotted his car outside of a local laundromat. Here, she sat and waited in the parking lot. 
She said that she was waiting to see if it was him doing laundry because she wanted to see him, but after waiting, she realized that it wasn't Nick who was at the laundromat. It was Tracy. Then, after seeing Tracy get into Nick's car, she decided to follow Tracy to her home because she wanted to see where Nick was living. But before going home, Tracy stopped at a Burger King drive-thru. She then followed her through the drive-thru and then followed her where she ended up at Nick's work. Police were able to obtain surveillance footage of Michelle following Tracy to Vermeer Corporation about an hour before finding Tracy's body. There, Tracy and Nick ate Burger King for dinner in her car. This meal lasted only a few minutes. After eating together, Tracy then drove home with Michelle following behind in her four-door gray Cadillac. Once Tracy and Michelle arrived at Tracy's apartment complex, Michelle put on some latex gloves. She said that she wore the latex gloves because she always wore latex gloves out into the store because of COVID. She said that she then got out of the car and walked over to Tracy's car with the intention of just talking to her. When she went over, she said that she opened the truck door and out of nowhere, Tracy started hitting and screaming at Michelle, calling her a crazy bitch. According to Michelle, Tracy just kept hitting her and hitting her. She said that she put her hands up trying to stop the physical fight, but Tracy kept pursuing her and yelling at her. She said that in that moment, she just snapped. After that, during the struggle, Michelle returned to her car and grabbed a knife that she kept in her car. This was a knife that she said she always kept in the car after her husband left her for, I guess, safety reasons. Then, after grabbing the knife, she returned back to the car and started stabbing Tracy. That is when the witness heard Michelle screaming at Tracy, he don't belong to you. After the fight, Michelle said that she immediately ran off because she knew that she had hurt Tracy. Michelle would later say that after stabbing Tracy, obviously she immediately threw her clothes in the washer and jumped in the shower to wash off any evidence of the murder. Then, while in the shower, she heard the loud knocking and banging on the door from the police. In that moment, she hopped out of the shower, put the bloody gloves in the toilet tank, and washed the blood off of the knife that she used as quickly as she could before answering the door. In that moment, she said that she knew she hurt Tracy, but she didn't know what to do. When she initially opened the door, of course, she lied. She said that she didn't stab Tracy, obviously, but she also said that she hadn't seen Tracy in months, which is a pretty terrible lie because there was literally records of her stalking her, but that's beyond the point. Now, in addition to all of the blood evidence that police found, including the blood found on Michelle's car and on those rubber gloves, Police also found that Tracy had pulled out some hair from her attacker and it was found still grasped in her fists. When police ran the DNA, of course, the DNA to this hair matched Michelle Boat. So, police obviously knew what was going on here. They knew that Michelle was the one who attacked and murdered Tracy. By May 19th, the day after the murder, she was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. The trial for murder started in May of 2021, almost exactly a year after Tracy's death. Michelle was pleading not guilty to charges of first-degree murder, instead saying that it was a manslaughter that she basically snapped and stabbed her, but she didn't mean to kill her in that moment. So that's why I guess it was manslaughter. Michelle did not dispute the fact that she did stab and kill Tracy that day, but she was adamant that it wasn't a planned premeditated murder. Again, she said that she snapped when she saw her husband with another woman that day. Now, the prosecution in this case argued that Michelle was scorned, seething, and obsessed. She had been stalking and assaulting Nick and his new girlfriend for weeks before this. They argued that this was a planned, premeditated attack. The prosecutor talked about how Michelle followed Tracy from the laundromat to Burger King, then to Nick's work, and then all the way back to her home. Then, as soon as Tracy parked, Michelle put on some latex gloves. The prosecution said that she didn't do this because she was worried about COVID. They argued that she gloved up to prevent leaving her fingerprints or other evidence behind because she knew she was going to be stabbing Tracy. They also talked about how they found binoculars in Michelle's car, 
which just adds to the argument that she truly was stalking Tracy that day. The prosecution then argues that right away, after parking, Michelle charged up to the car with the full intent on stabbing Tracy. She stabbed Tracy before she even got a chance to take off her seatbelt. So literally probably within less than one minute after Tracy parked, Michelle was gloved up and charged over to the car with a knife in her hand. Then the prosecution revealed that Michelle had been keeping a calendar in her home. This calendar had marked up each day since her husband left her. They argued that she was building up to the day when she could finally get him back. They talked about all of the calls and texts that Michelle sent, including texts that she sent to Tracy warning her to stay away from Nick. Then Nick testified in trial on behalf of the prosecution. Like I mentioned earlier, he told the courts about how the relationship between him and Michelle had been borderline abusive from the very beginning. They couldn't agree on anything from how to raise the children to just day-to-day -day life. He truly believes that Michelle never actually loved him. So after 20 years of marriage, after meeting someone new completely by chance, he left. Then the prosecution discussed all of the obsessive behaviors that Michelle showed in the weeks and days leading to the stabbing. They said, quote, This was the result of planning, plotting, and premeditation. Michelle Boat warned Tracy. On May 18th, Michelle Boat had already assembled all the tools that she needed for murder. She had the knife, she had the gloves, she had the binoculars, all with her, just waiting for one final ingredient, and that was opportunity. The defense argued that Michelle had been through a whole lot that year. Her husband of 20 years left her very abruptly. She lost her job because of the pandemic. She had nothing. The defense asked the jury to consider Michelle's state of mind when Nick left during the early stages of the pandemic. The defense argued, quote, Each of you remember back to March of last year, how scary your world was, the fear, the chaos, the isolation that we all felt in the early days of the pandemic. That's where Michelle was 69 days before the 18th of May. So that's the backdrop. That's the context. That's the big picture. Instead, the defense said that they're asking for manslaughter, not first-degree murder. Then Michelle took the stand in her own defense. She talked about how isolated she felt. She was completely alone, broke, and heartbroken in the weeks leading up to the stabbing. She said that her life changed dramatically, basically overnight. She said, quote, I just snapped. I grabbed the knife and I stabbed her and I dropped the knife. How did you feel when you realized on March 12th that Nick had left? Heart broken, sad, despondent, devastated, destroyed, like... My whole life had just walked out the door. There weren't going to be any more Thanksgivings or Christmases without him. He was my whole one. He... What happened to Vermeer? She parked the truck and he came out of the building and got in the truck and they ate I mean, whatever they got from Burger King, I'm assuming is what they ate, because they ate. And then he turned to her and he kissed her. And then he kissed her again. What did you do? I got out because I wanted to tell her. I wanted to tell her how much I wanted him back. And I wanted her to leave him. And I got out of the truck. I mean, I got out of the car. And I went around to talk to her. And I opened the truck door, and she started hitting me and screaming at me, calling me a crazy bitch. And so what's happening now? 
now between you and Tracy? We were, she was hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. And I had my hands up. She's yelling at me and I just, I just snapped and I grabbed the knife and I just stabbed her and I dropped the knife. And I went around, back around the car and went home. At the end of the trial, the prosecution made their closing statements. They argued, quote, it was intentional, it was malicious, and it achieved what the defendant wanted to achieve, which is to put out of Michelle's way the one person and the one thing that she believed was standing in the way of her reunion with Nick Boat. Michelle Boat didn't act because of some sudden, irresistible provocation. She was the provocation. The defense, on the other hand, said in their closing statements, quote, this isn't a movie, it's not TV. What's happening in here is a real life tragedy. I will tell you that Michelle Boat is responsible. Michelle Boat is the one who had the knife. Michelle Boat is the one who stabbed her. Going on to say, I don't want you to sympathize with Mrs. Boat. I don't want you to give her mercy. She doesn't deserve it. She killed someone, seated Belle in her truck with no weapon, killed her and left her for dead, drove off. That is not asking for sympathy when I ask you to consider why. The trial lasted for about a week before the jury of six women and six men went off for their deliberations. They deliberated for only 45 minutes when they came back with their verdict they found Michelle Boat guilty of the first-degree murder of Tracy Mondebo. For this, she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So, that is where the case ends. Obviously, it's a tragic situation all around. I do agree that the pandemic, along with her husband leaving her and her feeling like she had nothing, losing her job, all of these things contributed to this crime, but I do think that it was premeditated, and I do think she followed Tracy on that day with the intention of killing her. I honestly do think that something snapped, but I think it snapped before the stabbing. I think it snapped when she saw her coming out of the laundromat and driving Nick's car. I think that's what really pissed her off, and I think in that moment, she decided to follow her, and I do think that she had the intention of murdering her. It's just sad how this entire thing played out, I know that the lockdowns and all of the uncertainty around COVID has caused more domestic disputes, more domestic violence, suicides, and other mental health crises. It's definitely a consequence that I don't think a lot of people thought about when these lockdowns were happening, and I still don't think that a lot of people realized that there were a lot of consequences of these lockdowns, not just people getting physically sick, but so many people suffering with mental health issues because they were locked away from everything in their life, from their family, from their friends, from school, from work, people lost their jobs, people were losing their money. All of these things happened and so many people don't realize the effect that it can have on your mental health. So I can definitely see how it seems silly that Michelle blamed COVID because all of the headlines with this case was that, you know, she blamed COVID, she blamed the pandemic for the murder. Obviously, she herself is to blame for murdering another woman, but I can see how the pandemic definitely could have caused some significant depression and mental health issues that otherwise may not have popped up. But at the same time, I do think that even if COVID didn't happen, if Nick left, she probably would have reacted the same way. Would it have escalated to this point? I don't know. But I do think that in her personality, she just wanted to control Nick. I do think a lot of this shows control. I do think a lot of this kind of confirms what Nick was saying, that she was a controlling person. She didn't actually love him, that she just wanted to control him. And just because it's a woman doesn't mean that it's not true. Because this happens with a lot of cases where the man is trying to control the woman. But I think this is the same situation. I think she wanted to control him. And when she lost control, this is what happened. But again, at the same time, I do think mental health, all of this ties into it. Does it mean she's not responsible? No. She murdered someone. I think she intended on murdering her. And I think she did it to get Tracy out of the way. My heart goes out to Tracy, who dealt with so much with Michelle before her death. 
She probably saw this coming and that's just even more terrifying. She was probably afraid for her life at multiple points over the course of the couple months that this was happening. My heart definitely goes out to her. I know she had children of her own. My heart goes out to her children. She did not deserve for this to happen. Neither did Nick. But that is where I'm going to end today's video and now I want to know your guys' thoughts. Do you think the pandemic contributed to this crime or do you think it was all Michelle and that this would have happened regardless? What do you think of the prison sentence that she got and do you think it truly was a situation of manslaughter where she just snapped and wanted to hurt her but not necessarily kill her or do you think this truly was a planned premeditated murder? Let me know this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and fill out the Google form that I have listed down below as well. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.